Hello Creative Cooks, welcome back to another episode. I hope you're doing well as we start a new week. I'm Phoebean and today I'll be sharing two simple recipes with very familiar ingredients that you probably have in your pantry and can make this week to jazz up your meals, recipes and of course your taste buds. Each of these recipes are rich sources of plant protein they are meal prep approved so you can simply make them over the weekend that way you can have a nice stash of them for a variety of your meals during the week and each of them take about 10 to 15 minutes to make one of these super protein recipes do not require any form of cooking so if that's something you're interested in so you also have a pretty active lifestyle and are looking for simpler ways to add more plant-based protein to your diet this is the video for you remember to get a copy of your meal planners and grocery planners using the link below to help you achieve your diet and fitness goals let's start off with hemp seeds sprinkling hemp seeds on your meals is a great way to add more protein to your diet but just like with flax seeds one of the best ways to really absorb the nutrients from the hemp seeds is to grind them to paste or butter and that's exactly what i'll be doing today with only three ingredients Adding as much hurled hemp seeds to a clean and dry food processor, season with a pinch of sea salt and cinnamon powder to balance that super earthy and nutty flavor profile of the hemp seeds. Then grind the contents on high speed for about 10 minutes until the consistency is ultra smooth or to your desired consistency. Every now and again, be sure to scrape the sides of the food processor to push down any coarse bits and continue grinding until you get hemp seed butter with a seamless consistency when it drips. It's much thicker than the mixed nut butter recipe I shared a few months ago. Feel free to make a large batch of this goodie because like nut butter, hemp seed butter keeps really well in the fridge to maintain its freshness and flavor. After grinding, store the hemp seed butter in a clean, dry glass jar. Label it if you'd like and store it in the fridge. It gets even thicker when chilled. If you plan on leaving it out in your pantry, make sure every step of making it is moisture free so it doesn't grow any mold when you're ready to have hemp seed butter for say breakfast leave it out of your fridge for about 30 minutes that way when it reaches room temperature it becomes more spreadable you can have it with porridge a slice of bread a smoothie bowl whatever you'd like a few days ago i had it with some gluten-free plantain chocolate bread oh my which turned out so good. That was a delightful pairing because turns out the strong chocolate flavor from the bread truly complemented the flavor of the ham seed butter. Depending on what you pair it with, ham seed butter can be used in place of your favorite seed or nut butter. What would you have ham seed butter with? Have you made it before? Let me know in the comments below. In my next episode, no cooking will be needed. So subscribe for free and turn on your notifications so you don't miss it. If you're loving this video, let me know by giving it a huge thumbs up and share it with your loved ones who would find it useful as they prepare their meals for the week or the month ahead. Thank you. If you need help planning out your meals for the week or the month, you feel like it just takes too much time for you to plan out these meals. 
be sure to use the link below to sign up for a customized individual coaching session with me. Next is steamed millet and red lentils. I have shared a few millet and red lentil based recipes on my blog and here on YouTube such as red lentil flatbread, red lentil stew, pear and ginger bread. Do those ring a bell? All of those are on my YouTube channel. Just click here and there and you'll find them. But today I'll be combining the two grains to make steamed millet and red lentils that will become a nutritious replacement for rice-based recipes such as fried rice, star fries, and so on. Measure out equal amounts of millet and red lentils and wash them thoroughly in a sieve until the water runs clear. Because there are so many different types of millet and lentils, I've added a link in the description box below for the ones I typically use in my recipes so you can easily replicate this recipe and more recipes with ease. I also have a link for the hemp seeds as well. Add the drained grains to a large cooking pot with fresh water, a nice sprinkle of sea salt, and dried bay leaf to give these earthy grains a nice flavor. You may also add in some cumin seeds, fennel seeds, crushed coriander seeds, or similar options to boost up the flavor of the grains. Bring this entire system to a boil and after 5 minutes of cooking, reduce the heat to about low medium and continue cooking for about 10 minutes. That's it. Only 15 minutes. After about 15 minutes of cooking, fluff the cooked grains with a fork and taste to gauge their doneness. If they taste a bit grainy, cover the pot and let it steam for about 2-3 to three minutes. Taste it again and it should be fine after that. Steamed rice and millet cook in such a short amount of time. Once they're done, it turns out fluffy and very, very delicious. The end result is very similar to couscous. Since couscous is mainly wheat based, I opt to make this recipe so I can enjoy couscous recipes without the couscous. With the addition of the red lentils, a simple and easily digestible grain, rich in fiber and protein, you'll be sure to satisfy your recommended intake of protein and extra nutrients when you pair these steamed grains with your meals. Millet doesn't have that much protein compared to red lentils, but adding it to this combo will surely keep you satiated while you're feasting on your meals. You may serve these cooked grains hot or cold with accompanying meals, sauces, yogurt, stew, or as desired. Store these steamed grains in a fridge or freezer as you would cooked rice so you can have it later on in the week to pair with different meals. For me, instead of using oats, I'll be using this combo to make granola. Maybe I'll share that in another video. What you think? Here's a sweet way I like to have it when it's cold. Spoon some of it in a tumbler. Add in some of that cashew yogurt I shared in my last episode. Some golden raisins. And cinnamon powder. Hmm. This Creative Cooks is what I call gluten-free and dairy-free chakri without the couscous. You see what I'm doing there? My mother made chakri often and my siblings and I grew up eating chakri a lot during our childhood. 
if you're from the Senegambia region where I am from, I'm from the Gambia, you're probably familiar with this recipe. It is a yogurt-based dessert made with steamed couscous, sweetened with sugar, addition of yogurt, the whole shebang. Some add in raisins or fruit and others don't. It's also served in some really big occasions like weddings, ceremonies. I mean, we just go all out. What I'm concocting here is a makeshift version. If you'd like an in-depth video on that, comment below Chakri, that would be C-H-I-A, K-R-Y, people spell it differently depending on what part of the region you're from. Well, that's a creative cooks. Ham, seed, butter, and steamed millet and red lentils. Two simple plant-based and protein-rich recipes you can make this week, next week, next month. I mean, you can just have it in your stash somewhere to jazz up your meals. You may find the full recipes for each of these on my blog by using one of the links below. I'd love to know your take on these recipes in the comment section below. Creative Cooks, I appreciate you for tuning in today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll chat again soon. Have a good one.